how to improve a book listing on today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by SEM Rush. Started in 2008 with one mission, to make online competition fair and transparent with equal opportunities for all. To find out how SEM Rush can help you compete with the big boys, go to servenomaster.com backslash SEM Rush today. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author, Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. Sometimes people find me after they've had a book out for a few years and it's living in basically the middle of nowhere. The book is selling a copy a year, a copy every couple of months. And we don't really think of a book as an asset if it's making us less than a dollar a year. We find more change in the couch than we make from Amazon. And when you're in that situation and you're thinking, my book is tanked, there's nothing I can do. You're wrong. Your book can be saved and turned around recently. Actually, someone I work with approached me and said, well, I have this old book. We help me out. And so it motivated me to put together this lesson, put together today's episode. Some of these things are things we've talked about before, but it certainly bears repeating and kind of dialing it in. So the message stays strong. And these are exact things I did that took his book from basically being a corpse digital corpse into something that's actually doing pretty well now. It's now it's around number three and four's category. It'll hit number one probably in a couple of days. And he's doing some really simple steps. He's not putting money into the book. He's just putting a little strategy into the book. So one of the first things you can do, and I've got about seven of these key changes that you can make to improve your book listing. So let me take you through all of them. But the first one is changing the cover. And I find that this is actually a critical step and it really makes a difference. I've had to change the covers on a few of my own books before. What happens when you change the cover is really magical. Most people on Amazon, they're searching around, they see your book cover, either they click or don't click. So if your sales are really low, that means nobody's clicking. So people's only knowledge of your book is the title and the cover, and they don't remember the title very well because a lot of books have the same title. There are dozens of books with really similar titles. In fact, if you even search Serve No Master, I think there's a couple of other books that have similar type titles that come up. I don't think there's an exact match for that title. But a lot of other books have similar titles, you know, about don't serve that master, or no serving a master. I think there's a lot of romance books now that I think about it. I'm trying to remember the listings I saw when I checked it. But there's no, no, fortunately, there's no exact matches in the same niche as me. But if you have a book on potty training, how many different ways can you say that? Or a book on get more sleep or get more yoga. The titles are all very similar. So if you change the cover and people have only ever seen the cover before, not the listing, it really becomes a brand new book to people. They go, oh, I haven't seen that one before. And as we've talked about again and again and again, the cover determines whether or not people click. So changing the cover can immediately turn your book into selling once a month or selling twice a month. It'll immediately double your sales because it will increase your number of clicks. And that's the first step. I always recommend it. Even if you are in love with your cover, this is a way to kind of get a fresh start. And I find that most people kind of make a couple of key mistakes with covers. The biggest one is that it's hard to read when it's small. So when you're redesigning your cover, the first step is make sure it can be read when it's the size of a postage stamp. I buy, well, actually, 99% of the books I read now, I get through Kindle Unlimited. So when I choose a Kindle Unlimited download, the cover is everything because I do it through my Kindle. I do it through my device. So the cover is in black and white and small. And all I can see when I'm scrolling through are the cover and the name. Now, for a lot of covers, the cover is a waste because I can't tell what's happening probably at least half of the covers. Now I pretty much exclusively read sci-fi and a little bit of fantasy. I do, even though I almost exclusively write nonfiction, I don't read nonfiction very often. I guess it's just a matter of my entertainment being different from my work. But when I'm scrolling through so often, I look at the cover and I can't tell what's happening. And for me on a cover, I look for one of two things for a science fiction book. What I want to see on the cover really is a uh, space marine. I want to see a person in, that looks kind of like a robot on a planet shooting a laser. As soon as I see that, I go, I'm going to read this. And lately, there have been a couple of books that have that on the cover that aren't really about space marines, but I still grab them because that cover works on me. Otherwise, I look for something that shows like a spaceship shooting a laser in front of a planet. 
Those are the two things that work out for me. It's a very simple formula that makes me know, okay, that's what this is about. It tells me future, space, and combat. Those are the things I like to read about. I don't read every subgenre of science fiction. I don't really enjoy classic 1950s style science fiction, Ray Bradbury era. I've read a couple of those books. I'm just in a different phase of my life. Those books usually had heavy morals in the story. Like there was always a really strong, heavy message. And there's nothing wrong with that. It just doesn't appeal to me very much. One of my friends only likes basically pre 1980 science fiction, which is a different style of story. And that's absolutely fine. But the cover tells me what type of book I'm looking at. So when a book doesn't have the right kind of cover, I often skip over it. Changing your cover, making it readable in black and white and small will get you a larger audience because people will then know what your book's about. A lot of people don't click on your book because they can't figure out what it's about. You also want to be sure your name is readable. A lot of people, they go, my name's not that important, but it is. The name of the author often determines if I read a book. Sometimes I see a book and if I see the author's name is two initials and then a last name, I go, oh, it's probably a ghostwriter. It's probably a lower quality book. And it almost always is. It almost always is. That's why my pen names have a first and last name, because I don't trust. There's no reason now for a person not to use a real first and last name. Now, I understand back in the day, there were authors who wanted to hide their gender behind their initials. That's 150 years ago. Nowadays, you could just use a pen name. It's no problem. These little things add up. So I like to see the author's name. And also, once someone likes an author, they'll want to read more and more of your books. So changing the cover, making it readable, making it pop, making it different colors, all the things we talk about, about creating great covers. That's a great way to breathe a little new life into your book. That's one act you can do that costs $5 and will immediately change the trajectory of your book. Second step is to add formats. A lot of the books I see that are in purgatory or worse, they're ebook only. And when I talk to someone about that, they go, oh, it seems really hard to turn into a paperback book. You can hire someone on Fiverr for 5 or $10 to format your book to paperback. Worst case scenario. If you can't do it yourself, if you can't figure out how to copy and paste into Word, you can spend 5 or $10. You sell one or two copies of your book, you cover those costs. As soon as you have a paperback version, your sales will increase by about 40%. That's my experience when I've done it before. People see ebook only, they go, not a real book, not a real author, independent author, probably not a good book. It's another flag similar to the two initials one. But if you have a paperback version, they give you a little more credit. And if you have the audiobook version as well, and I've taught you how to do this over and over again in previous episodes, if you have the three versions, you start to look like a real book. When you have the three versions, you'll start selling copies of all three versions, but you'll also increase your Kindle sales. When people see Kindle, paperback, audiobook, they buy more of the Kindle version. It all ties together. They go, oh, this book is more real. I'm more likely to buy it. And that's a good thing. The next step you can take is to change the description. In fact, I just rewrote the entire Serve No Master description uh, last week for my prime book. Thought, you know what? A lot of people have already seen this description. So the people who respond to the description have seen it. Let's put in a new description. So now a new batch of people who see my book. If you change your cover and your description, you basically have an entirely new book. That's all it takes to give people a brand new, 100% new experience. So now look at your book and go, oh, this is something I've never seen before. Because first of all, people who've never clicked on it, click on it. People who had clicked on the other book will click on it thinking it's a new book. And when they read the description, if it's the same description before, they go, oh, I've seen this. But if it's a new description, you get a brand new lease on life. Changing your description, tightening up the messaging to really connect with your audience is critical. Having a really good, really crisp message. I find this is a very common error for people who approach me and say, oh, I have an older book. It has a problem. They didn't realize how important the description was. It's never that they did anything intentional. It's simply they didn't know how critical that step is. And they have like three or four sentences or two paragraphs describing the book when really what you want is to max out the word count that Amazon will give you and follow a formula where you have a headline, you have bullet points, you have benefits to the reader, why the book is awesome. All of those things are really important. And you end with a call to action. Hey, this book is awesome. Click add a cart right now and you're going to love it. So rewrite your description. You don't have to be a copywriting master. I'm not a copywriting master. I have worked my way up to where I'm a paid copywriter. I'm tier two, I'm not tier one. I'll probably hit tier one in about a year if I continue to take lots and lots of copywriting jobs because I want to master the craft. But even so, each time I get a little better, I redo my descriptions. You can find a really good book in your category 
and use their with a great description and go, I'm going to model this. And that's how I've always done it. I've just found better and better models as I've improved my book, as I've improved my copywriting skills, as I've improved my sales. So take the time to rewrite your description, even if it takes you a couple of hours. It's okay. because It's a long-term investment. I only change my descriptions every three months or so. You can do it less frequently if you have less time. Once a year is fine. Three, three months is the most frequently you should really need to do it. And it's really just going back and tweaking, going, you know what, I've changed some things about the book or my opinion. Let me tweak it. Let me add in new reviews. These little steps will keep your book fresh, keep it in motion. More people will notice it because the, when the listing changes, the book gets a little traction. Once you've got that new description, you absolutely need to create an HTML version of the description. Now I'm making a piece of software to specifically address this problem and it's going to be free. It's a free little tool that I'm going to put on my new website and I'll post the link below this video because I haven't finished the tool. I've been going back and forth with the designer for the past week and hopefully by the time you get this episode and the time it takes to edit and release this episode, I'll have finished editing and customizing my software, but it's going to be on my other website. It's going to be on my Kindle Sniper website my ebook tool. So that'll be the main tool on that website to help people with Kindle. And it's going to help you to write and convert your description into HTML. I used the tool on Friday to write the new description of Serve a Master. And so I kind of found, as you do, a couple of small problems. And I'm just tweaking those. Once they're complete, once they're perfected, then I'll release the tool and I'll post the link below. I'm really excited about that tool making my own. I've been using some other tools out there that are okay, but this is going to be even better because with my tool, you can type in your description and it will actually show you what your page will look like. You click a button and say, preview me, and it'll show you your book cover, your book title, and how the description will actually look in situ, how it will look when it's inside of Amazon. And that's a very valuable piece of Intel. Having an HTML description will make your description pop. It will increase your conversions and it will get you more sales. That's simple as that, having words. And when I say HTML, I mean having words that are bolded, having words that look like headlines, having words that are underlined, having words in italics, having words that are actual bullet points, those little dots. All those little things really add up. They're very valuable little steps, and they're a great way to jazz up and prettify your listing. Step five is to get more reviews. You can always get more reviews. You can always send out more free copies. You can always use... I have so many previous episodes. You can listen to the older episode about getting podcast reviews, but are getting the more book reviews you have, the fresher your book reviews, the better. So always send offering free copies to Facebook groups, always be offering free copies on Twitter, always be giving away copies to people that are fans of your other books, whatever you can do to get copies out there into the world. If you email every single person on Amazon, and offer them a free copy, all of those things are great. Give away copies any way you can to get reviews. Now I know that I do this all the time. If you give away hundred copies, sometimes you only get five reviews. So what? Those five reviews are worth it. Absolutely. As you get more reviews, we do num- step number six, which is editorial reviews. Amazon, if you log into Author Central, after you create your profile and add in some pictures, you can go to your book listings pages and gives you more sections. You ever wonder when you see those really top of the line books and it says about the author and it has a section that says from the back cover and from the author it has four or five extra sections. You go, wow, this is so pro. How do I get a pro listing? It's not anything pro. It's simply Amazon Author Central. When you log into Author Central, it gives you the ability to create your author profile. And if you look at my page, you can see a picture of me. I chose my picture. I wrote a description as links to my blog and social media presences. I have it connected to my blog. So every podcast episode actually gets shown on my author page. All these little things add up your value. You can create a custom link. So if you go to amazon.com backslash, I think it's user or author or something backslash serve no master it pulls up my profile. And you, or you consider it to be your author name, you can create a custom one. And it's worth doing, have a really memorable link. Every time I can, I try to capture the name Serve No Master in as much real estate as possible. So that when people Google Serve No Master, only things that come up are my properties rather than a competitor or a fan or anything. Not anything wrong being a fan. I'm certainly happy when fans follow me, but I certainly don't want it to lead to something that has nothing to do with me. So capturing that real estate is the first step. You connect it to your blog. You can upload some videos. They used to let you connect to YouTube and they change. They're always changing the rules for your Amazon author page. That's why I don't give a lot of advice about it because the rules have changed so often. Used to be able to connect your Twitter feed. Now you can't. Used to be able to connect your YouTube feed. Now you can't. So I don't know where Amazon is going. It seems like they kind of have a plan. I think they may be doing something to integrate with Goodreads. 
So there's a very good chance that by the time you hear this episode or in the future, Amazon will have changed how the author profiles are presented again. But as of right now, you can upload videos directly to the profile. You can connect it to your blog's RSS feed. So it shows blog posts and you can upload around to about 10 pictures. All of that's really worth doing to beef that profile up. And then once you've done that, you then go and you click on your book and you can manage your listing. And so you can combine your different editions. You say, hey, this is the paperback version. This is my book, the audiobook version. And sometimes Amazon will list your book as three different books, separately the three different editions, and you want to merge them into one. So then your reviews start to show for all editions. It's a great way to get your Kindle reviews onto the paperback version listing and onto the audiobook listing, all very, very valuable. And one of the really great things, they have a thing called editorial reviews. And most people use this section for a copying and pasting and they get a review from a famous author from the New York Times. Yeah, that's wonderful if you have those. Now, I certainly don't. I'm not that fancy. I don't have reviews from very many celebrities. But what you can do is take the best reviews from your Amazon reviews and just pull a copy out of a sentence. So I'll have a really great sentence. and say like, Servant Master changed my life. I can't wait to see what life holds for me. And then it's just from Stan Lewis. And I just say dash Stan Lewis. So what you can do is create a section that's just your best reviews, your favorite reviews. And Amazon lets you do whatever you want there. So that's what I do. I don't do anything sketchy, unnecessary. The other thing you can do is if someone leaves a review on a blog and they don't put it on Amazon, you can leave a review and then you say the name's person, you say the name of the blog, which is really cool. These are little things you can do to beef up the perspective of your listing. And if you have an older listing, you've taken the time to get others reviews, you might as well put them in a really great presentation. What you're doing is here is improving the presentation. Aesthetics are everything. When people scroll down, they will say, oh, wow, look at these editorial reviews. They'll just say, oh, this must be a great book. They don't even read them half the time. They just see that they're there and it changes how they perceive the book. What we're trying to do is alter perception. We want people to perceive your book as a professional book published by a real publishing company that has real reviews. If we can do that, we can move your book out of the fly-by-night ebook home published appearance category. People will take you more seriously and you'll bring a lot of new life into this old book listing. The seventh step from our little list of seven is work on your author central profile. Now I already described all those things, so I jumped one ahead. So to make up for that, I'm gonna give you a special bonus, number eight or number 7.5, if you wanna call it that, however you like to count, is to change categories. Once you've made all of these changes, moving your book in a new category is awesome. Because now you get a fresh chance. Every time you move categories, Amazon gives you a shot. They give you a little bit of friction. They go, oh, maybe this book wasn't selling because it was in the wrong category. And this happened before. I told you I had a book that was dead, selling a copy a month, and now it sells a, copy, a couple of copies a day just because I finally got into the right category. Amazon allows you to have two categories for every ebook, two categories for every paperback, and one category for the audiobook version of your book. So having these different editions means you start to appear in more and more categories. And when you play things right, sometimes below your listing, instead of showing your ranking in three categories, I'll show your ranking in seven, which is awesome. Take the time to check for new categories that relate to your book and jump into them. If there's a new category that didn't exist before, that's what happened to me. The most relevant category for my book didn't used to exist. As soon as it started existing, I moved my book into it and I got some amazing traction. These really simple steps, these seven or eight steps, if you will, because I feel like I merged the author central one with the editorial reviews one. These are really going to help you bring new life into a book. When you've done all of these things, even though you haven't changed the content of the book at all, right? I haven't said anything about that. You don't need to change a single word inside the book. None of that needs to change for this. It will seem like a brand new book because now it's in a new category. So different people are seeing and it's got a different cover, a different description. 99.999% of people will assume it's a totally different book. They won't even make the connection with the version before that wasn't selling. This is how you turn an old book into a brand new book and it can get you some amazing results. It can really help you to go to the next level. So just because you made mistakes a year ago, two years ago, five years ago with the book, doesn't mean you're stuck. You can now do things to turn everything around. And these are some powerful ways you can rebuild an old Amazon listing and bring new life into an old book and start getting the sales that you deserve. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back tomorrow with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller.
Serve no master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Serve No Master podcast. Email your questions to podcast at servenomaster.com and your question with my answer might appear in the next episode.